So why is loudness so important? Before we get into the ideas of how loud should you make your track and how to measure loudness, it's important to have a bit of context as to why this is important. Basically, playback platforms do something called loudness management or loudness normalization or perceived loudness normalization. In other words, listeners want each track they hear to be approximately the same level of loudness. If say one track was 10 dB louder than the track before, this would naturally be extremely jarring. And in fact, this is the biggest complaint both TV and playback platforms like Spotify receive. Listeners don't want to have to keep their hand half on the volume control, turning up a quiet track or turning down a loud track. And you may have experienced this yourself when cycling through sample packs. If say two thirds of the pack is at a quiet level, but then a sample is much, much, much louder and you're cycling through, that extremely loud sample jumps out at you and it's a jarring experience. It's extremely unpleasant. Expectation is everything. It's fine to say you have a loud drop if there's all this buildup happening before it. The buildup is conditioning the listener to expect that loud drop. But if, say, a track finishes and then instantaneously the next track is 8 or 9 dB louder, that becomes jarring. That is unpleasant. And therefore, and this is the important thing, playback platforms loudness normalize. If you have a loud track, the playback platform will quite simply turn it down. Let me show you why this is such a big deal. Here I have two tracks, the second of which the IPs approximately 5 dB louder than the left. And so if I'm a playback platform, what I'm going to do is turn down that loud track 5 dB. Therefore, loudness normalizing, giving both tracks the same level approximately of perceived loudness. Now, can you see why this might be a problem? Can you see how, at least in this situation, it's actually bad to be a loud track? Remember, I turned down the loud track, the loud track on the right. As I'm sure you can see here, a loud track has less space to work in. The technical name for this is dynamic range, the difference between the loudest sounds and the quietest, how much space everything has to work in. And it's intuitive sense that a smaller dynamic range is quite simply lower quality. Creative differences aside, it will always be lower quality than a high dynamic range. Every major platform does this, Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, and even the ones that don't currently, such as SoundCloud, will do extremely soon. It's only a matter of time. By the time you're watching this, there's a good chance SoundCloud does indeed loudness normalize too. Not to mention DJs do this too either, say, automatically using auto gain in their DJ software, such as here, or manually using the gain control on whatever device they're using to play back those tracks. It's no different to club. Listeners want a consistent loudness from track to track. And furthermore, as I'll show you later on in the course, if you can manipulate loudness, you can actually get these playback platforms to artificially play your track back a dB or two louder than everybody else's, at least your main sections, your drops, one or two dB louder than everybody else's, which, because it's only a few dB and it is expected, doesn't become jarring, but instead, quite simply, more exciting, more emotional. I'm sure you've done this yourself when your favourite song comes on. You turn up the volume a bit. And this is in fact what the best sound technicians do at events. At events, the best sound technicians actually ride the volume, turning it down for the breakdowns, turning it back up for the drops just a bit, but giving it that bit of extra energy when it needs it most. Understand loudness and you can do this in your own tracks too. Thanks for watching.